This is why you don't listen to Perspective End. The Mad Bastards actually did it. Hasbro actually gave us a mainline Tarn figure. For those of you who do not know about this character and just think he's a cool looking Transformer and that's why you picked him up, this character is literally like the Jigsaw of Transformers. That's how I always kind of look at him. A lot of people will say he's more like the Jason of Transformers because he kind of just relentlessly murders everybody, but... He enjoys quite a few very uh, twisted ways of uh, of killing his uh, his enemies. So for me, I always see him more as the jigsaw of Transformers. But regardless, he is a really, really, really not kid friendly character. And uh, yes, they they did give it to us in the Legacy line, which actually blows my mind. And they didn't even brand it as a. Cyberverse take. It is a straight up IDW comic take. It says Comic Universe on the box. By the way, here's the box right here. Pretty darn cool. I usually have the box thrown away by now, but yeah, there's some pretty cool little pictures on there right there. You get some nice little things right there, and uh, yeah, pretty cool little box, but yes, they did it. They gave us a freaking mainline Tarn, and as a lot of you know, I really love Tarn. I have only read IDW up to the point where uh, Tarn and the uh, DJD have kind of become a bit of more irrelevant towards the comics, and I did drop off of them after that because honestly they were the only reason I ever actually went and read some of the comics. And you guys know that I'm a huge fan of the character and have already picked up the absolutely glorious MMC Coulter, the third party Tarn. So, how does... Hasbro's take on Tarn come. In the words of the great Jimmy here, ah! they did it. They fucking killed it. Oh my god, dude. If you were holding out for Hasbro to make a mainline Tarn, holy shit, you are going to be so damn happy with this if you probably you probably already are, because you probably all already have this guy. But oh my god, they crushed it with this figure. A lot of people have been, I've been seeing a lot of people saying that this is one of the best Voyagers Hasbro has ever made. And honestly, I don't know if I'm ready to go that far yet anyway. I mean, I literally just got this guy and honestly, if I'm being honest, I actually, I do think he's a superior figure to him. But that being said, Oh my goodness gracious, this Tarn figure is absolutely immaculate. And don't worry, I'm going to go into it. If you're mad right now, if you're like, there's no way that Leo Prime is better than this Tarn, I am adding up all of the variables of the figure. I am adding up everything. In terms of uh, most things that most people are going to care about, he's absolutely a superior figure. But in my personal opinion, there's objective things here with Tarn versus Leo Prime that make Leo Prime a better figure. But we'll get into that in a bit here. But let's first take a look at Legacy Tarn. And first up, the head sculpt is dynamite absolutely phenomenal the mask does not remove but personally i'm fine with that if i want my mask off of my tarn i will simply use the coulter right there of course right there by the way even if you did get this legacy tarn i still i, I still 100% recommend Coulter. It is a fucking phenomenal figure, but we'll talk about more comparisons with that guy in a bit here. But yes, the head sculpt is absolutely dynamite. He does have, I believe, yes, he does have some red light piping, which is pretty darn cool. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show it too well, but you can kind of see it right there. Pretty darn good right there. You have his little turrets peeking up over the top right there, and I really love these because the way they transform, they have a little stopping point right here, which is pretty cool. One thing about Coulter that's kind of annoying is that these pieces just kind of move around back here, and I I mean, it's fine. It's, it's, it's a very, it's like a minor, it's a little detail. Like, I'm not actually saying it's a negative of this absolutely glorious figure, but it's really cool on this guy that these just kind of stop, kind of get, kind of reminds me of, uh, Studio Series Starscream, the Baver Starscream, where he has those stoppers on his, um, on his back fins in jet mode. I really, really dig that kind of stuff. And then moving down to his torso right there, very, very nicely done right there on his chest plate right there. There is definitely some translucent plastic in that torso as well. And then the shreds right here look really, really, really awesome. Love that. And then you have his arms right here looking great. Love the color breakup right here, the gray to the purple. And then you have his double fusion cannon right there. Gotta say, I do think MMC definitely wins in the category of the, uh, fusion cannon right there. Like, oh my, like, I, I think this one just looks way, way better, but um, you know, that's just me and a lot of people probably don't have that figure who bought this guy. But yeah, this fusion cannon is great and it does have some uh, cool options if you want to take advantage of it. But we'll go over that in a bit here. Uh, real quick, I'm going to turn my fan on because it's not as shit in here. 
There we go. I'm, so, I'm sorry if that's annoying, but I freaking need it. Anyway, getting back to this glorious figure. Uh, yes, going down here, you have some nice gold right there for that little knee pad right there. These are not on hinges like Coulter, but they are very, very nicely done right there. You have some nice gold picked out for these feet pieces right here as well. And yes, absolutely beautiful. Now, let's talk about the absolute best thing about this figure, in my personal opinion anyway. And that is this guy's freaking posability. Holy shit, this freaking Legacy Tarn can cut poses like a son of a gun. I have no idea what Perspective End was talking about in his uh, in his review of this guy, saying that the hot rod shoulders really limited this guy's pose ability. Complete bullshit in my opinion, dude. Every single pose I have gotten this guy in, he looks badass as hell. Literally just look at him right now. He looks so awesome. And if you literally just make, take advantage of like these transformation joint right here, you can get so many awesome as hell poses. I honestly can't get this guy to not look awesome. Look at this. You can get him in some really, really freaking amazing poses right here. This is just something I came up with. You can go to uh, go to my community tab. I posted a ton of poses that I've gotten this guy into. Look, this is one of the only Transformers that I can think of that can pull off a basically perfect kneeling pose. Look at this. Look at this kneeling pose. Like, look at this. Look at this freaking kneeling pose, dude. That might be the best executed, like, like double, like double knees on a transformer I've ever seen. And if that's not enough, he has probably the best opening hands of any figure I've seen from Hasbro. Look at this. You can get this guy to do a nearly perfect breaking his knuckles pose. Look at that. That is absolutely fucking amazing. The posability of this guy is just amazing. And yes, you can remove the fusion cannons if you want to. But obviously, as you know, Tarn, you know that they're going to be staying on 90% of the time. Although, maybe not all the time. Because, you know what, we'll just talk about that right now, actually. I think I went into depth about how, about how awesome the posability is. One more thing I do want to say, though, is you do have some nice, uh, um, like, uh, like what's, what's the word for that? The, the knee things right there. That He has those embedded knee things right there. And that's really cool. And they even kind of move with... With his leg right there so that's really really cool as well and then you also have some absolutely beautiful up and down at his ankle and then a beautiful ankle pivot the ankle pivot is limited to just this but it's I've been able to get him in so many poses again check my community tab you can see some of the amazing poses that I got this guy in he even has a very minor little help head tilt right there which I really 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 dig personally now look at this pose right here too look at this Look how freaking awesome this guy looks no matter what. What the hell was Perspective Man talking about in his fucking review? Look, I am trying to be too rude to Perspective End, but I think his opinion and, t and hot take on this figure was complete bullshit. <laughs> I guess, you know, it's my opinion, but seriously, like, after getting this guy, I literally call his review complete bullshit. Like, I have no idea what he's talking about. He goes on and on about how awful the, how the hot rod shoulders is, but he prays the hell out of Coulter, and he has the exact same thing. The exact same thing. Absolutely no clue. He even said in his video you, he can't get any, like, cool pointing and shooting poses. Broski, watch, this is gonna take me maybe five seconds. You're gonna tell me that doesn't look sick as fuck? <laughs> yeah, uh, that might be Perspective End's, like, worst review I've ever seen, honestly. I, I'm like, you know what, I am trying to hate. That review was terrible because this guy is so freaking good. Like, look at this. Look how badass this looks. And I literally just, this is just me going from that pose I previously had him in to just a default pose. And this is how fucking badass he looks, dude. Oh my god, this thing is so goddamn awesome. But with that being said, let's talk about a few other things that I really want to, that I want to address. Next up, I want to talk about his accessory. So this is his accessory. Now, you have a ton of options with this. You can actually pop these off right here and you have ports, pegs, whatever. Have fun with that. A peg right there. And then this piece can swivel, which is pretty darn cool as well. Now, the way that I always put these on and I keep them on pretty much indefinitely is I put that on like that so you want to have the peg in the front here and then plug that in like that and if you do it like this you have uh, you never have to move them when you transform him back and forth and also so you plug that in like that and you have this perfect thing although I think that's on no it's not uh, yeah so you can have that right there or you can take it and you can plug it onto his back right here and then rotate the turret upwards like this and you can have this going on for some weapon storage and also I think this looks cool actually like you can if you want to you can flip the smaller guns back down 
like that, and then you can angle these forward just like that, like you saw in the box. And I honestly think this looks dope as fuck. Like, you can hate on me, you can hate if you want, be like, DK, that's so, that looks so wrong for Tarn. I disagree. I actually think this looks really, really, really cool. Kind of, what's the, it, it's reminding me of a character from Transformers Energon. I can't remember who, though. They kind of look like Mirage's turrets, don't they? From Energon? I don't know, maybe that's just me. But yeah, that looks super cool. Who is it? Is it Snowcat who's reminding me of? This is definitely reminding me of somebody. Galvatron, no, no, Megatron. Energon, Megatron. He has those giant things that come up over his shoulders. Yeah, that's what that's reminding me of. And then another thing you can do with this, now I think this is stupid and I've, I've tried using it a few times just because it's all over the box, like they're literally like telling you to do this, is you pop off the two guns right here. And first off, I want to show something that's not complete bullshit, this is just stupid, that you can uh, plug his guns into his hands and use them as baseball bats basically, so he can just whack people with them, it's weapon time, yeah, you can do that, which is pretty darn cool, and I mean, it's not, it's not cool, it's just, it's just dumb, but he does have, admittedly, the articulation to allow it, and I mean, still cuts amazing poses, look at that, seriously, perspective, and what the fuck were you on when you reviewed this fucking figure, absolutely, literally, like, at a loss for words, dude, that looks so badass, he's literally holding two guns like a baseball bat, how on earth do you make that look badass? And then, the dumb thing that Hasbro tells you you can do, I mean, it is something you can do, so I guess it's not completely dumb, is you plug these together like this, and then he can use them as, like, a giant fucking sniper rifle if you want to. He does have the articulation to make it look reasonably good, so... I mean, in all fairness, yeah, they did give him the articulation to make it look somewhat decent, but I will never use this after this review. He will pretty much always have his guns either on that or on his back, because like I said, I kind of dig the way they look on his back. Real quick, I'm asking y'all if you all are enjoying the video so far, maybe go down there and give it a like. I would very much appreciate that. And for comparisons, first off, of course, here he is with Coulter, and uh, yeah, we got a real don't talk to me or my son ever again situation going on right here, but there you have the two uh, Tarn figures that are available. There is also a model kit, I believe, but they don't transform, so we don't talk about those. Uh, for all intents and purposes, if you want a Tarn, these are the two you're going to be selecting from. Now, I cannot deny that the Coulter is obviously a superior figure, but it is also a significantly more expensive figure, over double the price of the Legacy. So, if you're on a budget and you don't want to blow a ton of money, honestly, the Legacy one is going to be completely perfect for you. Like, you're like honestly, I'm sure there are people out there who probably have both of these figures and prefer the Legacy one. There's a lot of things the Legacy one does have over the MMC Coulter. For example, the, the kibble on Coulter is way, way worse than on uh, than on uh, Tarn right here. You can see this right here is a little bit more uh, messy. He also has his big treads hanging off the back where the, uh, the Legacy one does not whatsoever. I will also say I think his arms are a little bit more nicer on this one because they are a little a little thinner. They don't go all they don't go as far down his legs as these ones do. They're also a lot more easy to pose as opposed to the ball joint on the hinge bracket system. Transformation is certainly more satisfying on the Legacy one. And yeah, there's definitely things that this one has over this, but overall between the, pl the like plastic quality, posability, a lot of it is probably going to go to uh, MMC Coulter, but it's it, it does not change the fact that this is still an amazing figure. And if you have no desire to spend, uh, to either spend the amount on Coulter or you have no desire to buy a third-party Transformer, I literally, I, I can say safely that you will honestly, you will be completely perfectly fine with the Legacy Tarn. Next up here he is with the Earthrise Optimus Prime. So you can see how he scales with the Earthrise Optimus Prime. Here he also is with a new favorite of mine, the Legacy Leo Prime, which is also his wave mate right here. And I'll talk about these two more uh, when I get to the final thoughts on Tarn, but uh, they are both absolutely phenomenal Voyagers and a really, really amazing start to Legacy Evolution. So very, very awesome there. Here he also is with Kingdom Rodimus right there. And then one more fun little comparison that I'm going to do here because I can. Here he is with the MMC of Kaon. I believe is his name. I actually forgot his name and I might be saying Kaon because I am a weeb. Uh, but um, I think his name is Kaon. But this is the MMC Kaon that goes with the MMC uh, Tarn right here so you can see how they look. And obviously he's out of scale but honestly not by much. I have no, I, I highly doubt Hasbro has any desire to uh, make any more members of the DJD but oh my god if they did absolutely I will buy every single one of them. No questions asked. I love the DJD and these figures are way too expensive to uh, get the whole thing. At least they were for me but uh, it'd be really awesome. Although like, I don't really think they are Although, in all honesty, I never thought they were going to do Tarn either, so who knows? They might do it. All right, now to transform him, of course, he is going to have to pop off his thing. Well, parts for him. No, 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 it's fine. And we're just going to close his hands right there and bring them down just like that. And we can get started. So you can go ahead and just clip his legs together just like that. I just remember what I need to do here. Okay, we're going to untap this back piece right here. There's two tabs that tab in right there. Putting that back and then rotate it around and fold up the guns right here. And then there's tabs on either side that those will softly tab into place with. And then you want to rotate his head back into his back right there, just like on Coulter. And then you want to come to the front here, you want to untab his chest panel here, bring it up a little bit, and then you want to full take out his uh, his shoulders right here. You can see these, these shoulders actually like extend out, and that allows you to rotate them to the back like this, which allows you to bring this piece up, and then you want to finish rotating these 
enemies around just like that. Very, very interesting the way they uh, engineered that. It, it was a little bit confusing when I was first trying to figure out a transformation, but you figure it out, and then it's actually it's pretty darn easy. So then you want to rotate the arms down just like this, and then at this point, we're going to bring this piece down, and there is a peg that's going to go into a peg hole in the butt right there. And then at this point, you want to go ahead and untab these double joints right here for his transformation right there. So go ahead and do that, and then fold up his feet as well. Make sure that these pieces stay tabbed together just like that. And then you want to bring his arm, and you want to put it like that, and you want to flip this little piece right here around, and then you want to hinge this in, and then you have a peg that goes into a slot right there just like that. Make sure this is all out of your way just like that. And then you want to untab this tread piece, fold out this little door here, bring this around. That's going to tab in place and kind of cover up the arm a bit. And then you want to just fold that down to the back right there. And then you want to do the same thing on this side. So bring that down, tab that in right there, fold that up, bring this piece up, untab that door, fold it in and fold that up. And then you want to bring the legs down like this and you have two tabs where you're going to go into those feet right there. They just find their way home very easily. And then you want to take his gun, rotate it on the turret right here and plug it into these two little tabs on the top right there. And there you have Tarn in his vehicle mode. Now we reach the first issue that I have with the Legacy Tarn. And that's not the vehicle mode, the vehicle mode is awesome. The first issue I have with Legacy Tarn is his transformation. It's not a bad transformation by any means. I can do it and it's perfectly fine, but it's not really a fun transformation in my personal opinion. Like I don't really want to continue to do this transformation over and over and over again. It's fine though, it's not horrible, which is one of the things that I think is better, that I think like Leo Prime wins over him. Um, his transformation is actually quite fun. It is also a little bit, like I said in his review, it's a little bit clashy, but it is. Re but his transformation is pretty damn fun. This one is just kind of a way to get from point A to point B, and it's just, it's fine. Again, I can do it, but it's just not anything really all that fun or satisfying to do. With that being said though, the tank mode is actually pretty awesome. I actually think I like his tank mode a little bit more than uh, Coulter's. It looks a little bit more cohesive, like an actual vehicle right here. I will say I've never been able to get his treads to sit right. Like they're supposed to be like, obviously they're supposed to be like straight, but I can never get them to sit right. I've tried everything. They always sit like that, but no big deal. He doesn't actually have any real re any real wheels. So if you roll him, he's just going to be, he's just going to be sliding along the ground. So really no big deal there. And you do have some awesome some uh, um, turret rotation right here and you can flip and you can obviously bring those up right there which is super 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 cool as well and then you can also rotate these guns as well which is super super cool as well that's kind of weird that, never, that has not ever uh, happened to me before there we go although I don't usually mess with him too much in this mode so that makes sense but yeah very cool I will say I'm not a fan of the pen of the pins sticking up out of the top of the treads right there I don't really like that it would have been nice if they could have captured those off right there and then he also does have his hands just chilling on the back but not a huge deal and also just I really I actually wish that these could hinge down like Coulter in uh in Coulter's vehicle mode these pieces hinge down to the back but his they just stick out and it would have been really nice if they could have just whoosh, down to the back but you know can't be too mad because they crushed it so freaking hard with this guy overall so yeah, the tank mode is really, really cool. It's fun. It's a nice, solid little tank. Like, it kind of reminds me of uh, Brawl's tank mode, Studio Series Brawl's. It's just a nice little chunk of plastic, and you can just have fun with it. It's cool, man, and I like the turret, and I like the turret swivel. It's just a do it's just a cool little vehicle mode, man. Not one you're going to use all that often because it's, uh, you know, it's not really anything, and you're probably going to be too, way too busy. You're gonna, probably going to be having way too much fun with the robot mode to give that to give all that much of a shit about ever transforming him and using the alt mode, but when you do, in my opinion, the alt mode is a win. I do like it. There's also some gaps right here, but eh, it, they're, they're barely even noticeable. It's a very, very nice alt mode. I dig it. Alrighty, and for comparison, of course, once again, here he is with MMC Coulter, and you guys can tell me which one you think is better. This is actually the first time I've transformed him into his vehicle mode in a very long time, and I will say, easily doing both of these transformations, like, back-to-back -back with each other, yeah, uh, the Legacy one is definitely more fun and more satisfying. The, the uh, Coulter transformation, though, is not that bad. It, it, it's, a, it's actually a pretty decent transformation. In a lot of ways, it kind of just feels like an old Lear class figure, like from like the Unicron trilogy days or something. Like he's a very simple transformation and it is reasonably fun. But I would say his is just a little bit more satisfying, clicks in place a little bit easier. It is just a bit, a bit more of a fun experience. With that being said, between the two tank modes, honestly, I thought I liked this one a lot more than um than this one. But honestly, I actually think they're both pretty darn great. I think they're actually pretty close. And I think this one is not there. We go, not tapping all the way there. Uh, I think they're actually pretty darn close. You guys can decide which of these tank modes you like better. Uh, you do have so definitely some different designs going on right here. Like this one, I never real, I didn't realize that this one was so different than this one. You have like these big giant treads in the front here, and this one doesn't have anything like that. It just has like the ones here and ones here. So. I don't know how accurate, I don't know which one of these is more accurate, I haven't paid it that close enough attention to Tarn's alt mode, which is kind of sacrilegious to say about a character like Tarn who loves his alt mode and transforms a lot, but yeah, uh, there you have that, that is the two Tarns that are, that is the two Tarns vehicle modes. And also here is Studio Series Revenge of the Fallen Megatron as well. And here's also Studio Series Brawl. And just for a car, here he is with Studio Series Jolt. And there you have Legacy Evolution Tarn, and my final thoughts on this guy are, holy shit, dude. 
This figure is absolutely fucking stupendous. People saying that this is one of Hasbro's best Voyagers, I honestly have no problem with people saying that. He is absolutely spectacular. Just everything about this guy is fucking amazing. I have no idea what the people who are complaining about this figure are complaining about. Honestly, both every single issue that most people have been compl have complained about, that I've seen people complain about with this figure, when I got it in hand, I literally never saw them even a little bit. The posability is just off the charts. It's incredible. You can get this guy in so many fucking poses. The uh, the transformation, not the most fun thing in the world, but it's uh it's fine. You you will you'll probably it's fine. It's a fine transformation. It's like a B plus tier transformation. The alt mode is fun, uh, but really honestly, the best thing about this figure is the posability. The posability on this thing is just extraordinary, and the fact that it fucking exists, that we have a mainline Tarn that you can literally buy for like thirty bucks. Well, you were you could buy it for thirty bucks. He's been a little bit harder to find recently. I got lucky and was able to find one at Target. I literally went to Target just praying that they would have one left, and they did. They had one left, and then like ten Leo. Primes. Nobody's buying this Leo Prime. Are you serious? Nobody's buying this figure. This figure is fucking awesome. In all honesty, this figure is absolutely superior to Tarn. His plastic quality is better. His bang for your buck is better. His transformation is better. It's definitely a better figure. Like he he feels way heavier, way nicer. Like you're getting way more for your money. And uh, yeah, he's just he's definitely a superior figure. But a lot of people don't care about Leo Prime. But and I mean. It, so the it's kind of weird because Leo Prime is probably nobody cares about him because nobody really knows the story with him and they just and uh, but with Tarn I've seen like most of the reviews I've seen people literally open the review saying I've never read the comics or anything but he just looks dope as fuck so I'm a little bit like I'm kind of like why is Leo Prime so unpopular then because it's, it's like the exact same thing dude like this figure is awesome man Leo Prime is so so cool and in all honesty I do think he is a superior figure to Tarn but that being said, not by much, and Tarn is still an absolutely immaculate fucking figure. They crush it with this guy. I am really happy I picked him up, even though I already have the MMC Coulter. Now, between him and MMC Coulter, obviously Coulter is better. There's no question about Coulter being better. He's like triple the weight of this thing. He feels like, yeah... He, yeah, <laughs> obviously he's better. It's a $150 toy versus a $30 toy, dude. So, obviously he's better. But it's honestly not by much. It's honestly not by much. And uh, I think they, I think they knocked it out of the park. I really do. I think he is such a cool figure. I love everything about this guy. I'm so happy I did decide to pick him up. Uh, yeah, really, really freaking amazing done. Honestly, the posability, in my opinion, is the best thing about this figure. Like... The poses you can get this guy in are just incredible. He can cut just anything you want. And he can just look so badass while doing it. Here, I'll get you guys one more awesome pose before we leave right here. There you go. One last awesome pose. Okay, admittedly, that is a little bit heavy for him to hold up. But yeah, just an awesome fucking figure. Obviously, this guy is an S tier. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe give me a like. And yeah, thank you for watching. And this is DK Guillotine. I'll sign me out.